Okay, we're here with two retired paramedics. This is Brian. Over here is Gary, my old partner. I taught him everything he knew. We'll start with Gary. Gary, how long you been on the job uh, working as a paramedic before you retired? 37 years. 30 years as a paramedic, seven years as an ambulance man. And uh, how did you uh, find uh, working those years? Basically, if you could tell the people out there, what can you tell somebody if they want to become a paramedic and uh, some advice? You have to uh, be certain that that's what you want. You don't want to go in there and find out that you're really not cut out for it. Be certain about it. Has, um, has it taken a toll on you in any, any way? Yeah. It did. Uh, I thought I'd be okay after bad calls, but uh, I lost uh, a lot more sleep than I thought I would. Losing sleep, I don't care what you say, is one of the most detrimental things that can happen in your life. Your sleep is so important. Brian. How many years have you been on, uh, or before you retired as a paramedic? Uh, 32 years. 32 years. On the job, man. Working, uh, both of you worked a major city. Yes. Um, after 32 years, you must have seen some pretty incredible uh, life and death situations, to say the least. I did, but two emergencies over that period would probably rank in the neighbor of uh, Rochester, maybe 20. Oh. The, the standard calls that you deal with every day up there are the norm. And then uh, you get your true emergencies, like a seven year old that ran through a plate glass window, that sort of thing. That's, to me, I consider that more of a true emergency. Would you ever do it again? I'd love to do it again. <clears throat> Best job ever. And what did you find about um, being a paramedic that you, you really thought it was? The best job you could ever find. Well, basically, it's uh, you're helping people to the extent you're able to with your skills and ability and your equipment available. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that every shift is totally different, you never know what to expect. I just can't work a routine kind of job. Anything else about being a, a paramedic in a major city in Canada? Yeah, it's just that uh, you, you, you're helping people, and uh, that's the most important thing. But also, the most important thing of my career was that I worked with so many. My most memorable call was the night my partner and I uh, delivered three babies. We got there, and the first baby was coming out as the lady was on the toilet. We assisted uh, the baby, and we got the mother on the stretcher. Uh, she then told us there was two more coming. She'd come down from up north to search out a specialty hospital for uh, multiple deliveries. She went to the call thinking it was just a single bird. And then she was on the stretcher in a small hallway. There was a, a bedroom across the hallway. And in the bedroom were two other little children that she'd already have, four and uh, a two-year-old. They were playing. They knew there was something exciting going on in the house with their grandparents were there with them and uh, we delivered the uh, two little girls right there. Incredible, incredible. And, uh, they, uh, they named the, the babies, uh, the little boy, they named the little boy m my partner's name and my name, the double name. Hmm. And it was, uh, it was a wonderful night. It's, uh, and that was probably about seven years before I retired. It was a lovely, lovely day. But, you know, it erased um, all the really bad calls. You know, it helped with uh, the memory that I had to deal with the uh, sadness that I saw over the years. It's hard to really pick a most memorable call, but uh, I've done quite a number of them. Uh, they actually do humorous calls, too. Uh, I recall going through a uh, potential hanging at one time and uh, there were a couple of apartment buildings by each other. We went up to the floor, we were searching all over the sixth floor and uh, knocking on people's doors, trying to alert them and see if we could find out where the victim was. 
And uh, some guy came up with bags full of groceries and was laughing his head off. And we thought, well, that's kind of strange, the police and ambulance there, and he's laughing his head off. And we explained to him what we are looking for, that we had a report of a hanging on this floor. And he said, come with me. So we opened up his apartment, and sure enough, he had his wetsuit hanging up to dry in his living room. And the people across the apartment, across the way, had called it in, <laughs> which they should do, because it could have potentially been a person. And maybe we were able to help. So stuff like that does happen, which is just breaks up the continuum of the day a little bit. So, And that, obviously, the humor, um, that type of humor. Well, looking back at it, it was a humorous situation. And it gets you through the day a lot of times. It does, yeah. It's not all down. It, it, there's highs and lows like any profession. You enjoy some days better than other days. Other days just stretch to the limit. But basically, uh, giving a call and you never know until you get there exactly what you're dealing with. But it's a challenge to uh, find out the best way to uh, you know, fixate the injury, stop the injury, and then uh, take treatment and pursue it from there towards the uh, final procurement of uh, more professional help. Now, have you, what changes have you saw when you first started over 30 years ago? Well, initially we've uh, brought in the act of uh, symptom relief where certain drugs are able to be given. We also have defibrillation, which was brought in. I was one of the original uh, color codes that tried the defibrillation for the service. and. Uh, before that, it was simply you come in, you establish VSA, uh, which is vital signs absence. Uh, you would start CPR, and it would be a matter of transporting to the facility where it was taken over from there. So now we're able to uh, shock on the scene and hopefully restart the uh, person's heart, get them uh, in a better situation and condition towards transportation, uh, maintenance of that pulse, and uh, into the facility where they can see doctors and further care. So there's been a lot of changes. Quite a lot of changes. Hmm. And the stability of uh, accident victims and whatnot with respect to backboarding and uh, the, the collars. Uh, we used to use old devoted uh, towels around people's necks. Now we have certain braces and everything that are all utilized. In incredible, incredible. Like, can you believe that? Yeah. Towels, and look how far you progressed. Exactly, so it's, it's, been, uh, it's been amazing. and. Uh, as to how far it will go and uh, can go, I don't know. And you, and you witnessed the changes, which is quite remarkable. Yeah. I'm really enjoying this interview. And I envision sometime that they'll go to a photojournalist attitude where you actually have a helmet cam and uh, you're right in touch with a doctor. Mm. And the doctor actually sees the patient that you're dealing with and it's all transmitted back to the hospital and you have advice from there. Thank you. You're welcome. Gary? Okay. Gary? <laughs> yes? Any last words you'd like to share with, uh, uh, you know, uh, your career? It, it, you know, certainly takes a toll on people and they have a new terminology. I don't think you, you heard it when you were uh, younger and that's post-traumatic stress disorder. Do you believe that exists? Oh, I'm sure it does, but the thing is, uh, I, I think that if you're going to go into this work, uh, just like if you're going to be a hockey player or a football player, you've got to take the fact that you've got to keep yourself in shape and prepare yourself for the uh, physical and the mental uh, torture that is possibly there. So you cannot go into anything thinking, well, this is going to happen to me and I'm going to blame it on somebody else. You have to take a certain amount of responsibility yourself. I, having said that, I think that people that do have the unexpected happen to them, the injuries, the mental thing, like uh, seeing some terrible, terrible things that uh, paramedics and police officers and firefighters come across, uh, I think they should get as much help as you know they can to uh, get them through the rest of their lives. Okay, my name is Brian Herbert, and I appreciate your uh, listening to what I have to say with respect to my profession and career. And I hope it's been useful and instructive to you. And I thank you again. So, Hi, thank I'm, you very much. I'm uh, Gary Steele. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, their interest in the, the career that I had. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate uh, the time that I had here, having a chance to uh, share it with you today. Thank you.